If you want to take a really relaxing drive and see some amazing country, consider the Gold Rush Trail, Highway 97. <laughs> share with you uh, our, our journey down. And this fall, on our way back down to Vancouver Island, we took uh, the, the Pine Pass, uh, the Hart Highway, and Gold Rush Trail. Those are all different names for Highway 97 that runs through the, the interior of BC. This is an amazing drive. Uh, it gets you away from the heavy traffic of the highways. Um, you get to see some amazing views uh, that you don't get to see in the, the national parks. And it is, a, it is a journey well worth it. And what makes it so nice is all the little stops along the way. So we picked up uh, Highway 97 at Chetwind, B.C., now, Chetwind is a great little town because there um, they, they have um, the Chainsaw Festival. That's where they take great big logs and um, they use chainsaws and they make different statues out of them. And as you go through Chetwind, you're going to see all of these different chainsaw carvings that have been done. And there are some really good RV parks right around the Chetwind area, so to find accommodations there, easy to do. Now going on through Chetwind, you enter into an area called the Pine Pass. The Pine Pass, again, you're going to travel along, you're going to see um, the, the mountain rivers that are just crystal clear. Um, there are places along in there to stop and to just get out and kind of take take short little walks. Um, if you needed to to rest at all, there's definitely plenty of places to pull over and rest and you know make your lunch and and have a rest if you absolutely needed to stay overnight. I'm sure that like there are places to pull over and safely stay stay overnight if you needed to. Uh, there are a couple of provincial parks in the Pine Pass that you can get to. Um, I don't know what they're like because, again, by the time we go through either coming or going there, uh, the, the parks are not open when we travel. So we don't tend to stay in the provincial parks. What we find usually are the RV parks that are, are still open for a few more weeks. Now, going through the Pine Pass, there is one absolute must-stop place, and that is Azueta Lake. At Azueta Lake, there is a cafe there, and they have the most amazing donuts. Like, hands down to die for donuts. So these donuts are, like, that big. They're four bucks a donut, but they are melt-in-your-mouth good. And um, there's different donuts every day. They are fresh made. They do not keep any day old donuts. And like we had one that was a maple maple bacon and it had real bacon pieces on it. And it was just mouth watering good with maple flavor. So definitely must stop there. Some really great opportunities for picture taking there at Azueta Lake. Then uh, and that's right by um, Powder King um, uh, Ski Resort. The next place that you might want to stop and take a look at is the Bijou Falls. And a great fall for picture taking. And there's some stellar jays that hang out there all the time. And that's a stellar jay is kind of like a blue jay to me anyway. It's a, not an overnight park. It's just a day use park. So you can stop there and have your lunch and, you know, take a walk and, you know, let the dog get out and trot around uh, as long as it's on leash. And then from there, we went into Mackenzie and we stayed there and visited some friends. Mackenzie is a logging community, uh, but they have really developed some ecotourism and that they've got great hiking trails. There is some amazing fishing to be done there. Um, interesting history and a town very much worth the stop to see. 
From there, we traveled down through Prince George and on our way to Williams Lake. At Williams Lake, we stopped and visited a few more friends. I can't say that I know much about Williams Lake because we just stopped overnight there. But here's the thing. We stopped an overnight at Walmart parking lot. Yes, you can stay at Walmart parking lot. We've stayed in, now in Williams Lake, in Chilliwack, in Grand Prairie, in Fort St. John. And, you know, the funny thing is, all the way up to Whitehorse, you can stay in the Walmart parking lot. Um, we usually call ahead and make sure that it's okay, or we go inside and ask permission. And, in fact, even last spring, um, when we were on our way up, we, we got to 100 Mile House. We were dog-tired. Uh, there was nothing open. There was not an RV park open. There wasn't any place. And we pulled into a grocery store there, and it's posted all over there, you know, no overnight parking. And Brian went in and talked to the manager, and he said, yes, as long as you park over in this little area. And, you know, and it was a great spot. But we always ask permission, and I think that's kind of the key thing. But, yes, you can park in the Walmart parking lots here in Canada. Now, from Williams Lake, we continued on down to Spence's Bridge. This was such a beautiful, relaxing place. So Spence's Bridge has got some pretty interesting um, gold rush history. I uh, won't tell you too much about it. You can look it up on your own and stop there and see. But the two places to really stop and visit there, and I guess it's the only two places to stop and visit there, one is the... Um, a packing box, a packing house cafe. And it was originally a packing house for fruit. The other one was the Log Cabin Pub. You can get an absolutely fantastic burger there. We enjoyed ourselves. Um, apparently they have really good fish and chips. Wouldn't know that except we were told about that. But we had the burgers and yes, they were really good. Food was absolutely awesome at the packing house cafe and you can get one of your fancy coffees there as well if you would like. The campground that we stayed at, the RV park that we stayed at, was Acacia Grove. We were one of three units there. Again, it's off season, so it was very quiet and for us very, very relaxing and peaceful. Now at Spence's Bridge, you've got the, um, the train that goes in both directions. You have the train, on, uh, train tracks on one side of the river and train tracks over on the other side of the river. And uh, so, so they kind of pass each other uh, sometimes. And it sounds like it would be very noisy, but it's not. It was really quite nice. They have some benches set up along the riverbank so that you can watch the trains if you would like. Um, great, great people there that are um, at the, the host there at the RV park. Well worth a stop. Um, the town there, I think they... <laughs> The youngest person there might have been about 50 years of age. We kind of vegged out for about three days and enjoyed ourselves there. Now moving on down the highway, and from Spence's Bridge, we traveled on down to Kilby Park. Kilby Park is by Harrison Mills, uh, which is by Harrison Hot Springs. And um, we drove into Harrison Hot Springs, uh, but you know, it's, a, it's very much a resort town. Um, very beautiful for sure. Um, a few nice walks to take there. We didn't get to see the hot springs because the hot springs are actually contained within the hotel. Um, but we did have um, a lunch there at a nice uh, little uh, deli cafe. And we had a really nice walk around, around their man-made lake there. But where we went to was Kilby Park, which is by Harrison Mills. The town is actually Kent. So if you're going to put it into your GPS, it is Kent. But be careful because our GPS told us to turn left when we should have turned right and we ended up in somebody's driveway and had to back our, you know, 37 foot unit way back down this driveway. So don't want to do that again. Anyway, Kilby Park is a BC park, but it is not a provincial park. Again, we spent about four days, uh, no hookups, so it was nice to just kind of get away from everything. We took a few drives from there. There was a, um, a, uh, a salmon hatchery uh, a little ways up the road, and we traveled up that and kind of thought maybe we had missed it, and all of a sudden there it was. And so we got to see all these salmon that were kind of running up the, the weirs uh, um, 
uh, to do their spawning. So that was interesting. It was a cold, rainy, wet day, so we didn't stay too long. But it was, again, a very nice drive to get up there. Uh, we went to the Kilby Museum. Interesting thing about Kilby is that this general store uh, was probably still in operation, I think, in the mid-70s, 1970s. And it's built up on stilts because uh, the area there always flooded. Awesome Pie in their, their little um, uh, cafe that they have there at the museum. Fantastic pies. Uh, again, well worth the price. Then we went to Agassiz and we toured through the hotel there, or not the hotel, sorry, the museum there. Um, from, from there we went on to Highway 17 which took us through Mission. Um, then a little little jaunt onto Highway 1 and we went into Tawasson. We went to an RV park there and it is called Tawasson RV Park and how it's said is nothing like how it's spelled. So just look up TWS and you might get started on it. But Tawasson RV Park is the Tawasson Ferry that we took over to uh, Vancouver Island. But this RV Park, if you have a bigger unit, uh, you might want to be careful. It is rather tight to get in there. I mean, they really do pack them in there like sardines. So. Um, that's just an aside, but again, um, great people that work there, uh, very helpful, uh, right next to that uh, RV park, there's a great big mall area there if you wanted to do some shopping, but here's the neat thing. Right at that, the end of that little peninsula there at Tawasson is Point Roberts, USA. Now, if you follow over from the mainland, that uh, the 49th parallel, and it goes right through this little little spit of land at, at the end of that peninsula there. And it's only about five miles square. So we decided, why not? We're so close. So we drove in there, just went over there for lunch, uh, um, had a nice day. Uh, we walked along the beach. Um, apparently you can do whale watching from there. We weren't so lucky we didn't get to see any whales. Uh, but we stopped at this really great little cafe um, and, and had a nice lunch there. We drove around um, up and down every every street that we could find there. Uh, just in, enjoyed a little quiet there. Um, it was it was an interesting thing, you know, just to say. And then there's actually this one little spot where there's this marker. And on one side it says USA and the other it says Canada. So, of course, I had to, you know, straddle both so that I was in two countries at once. Anyway, it's kind of fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And Brian was like, no, no. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, come on. So we had fun. And uh, then we went back and we headed over on the ferry to Vancouver Island. So, you know, if you're looking for a drive, um, a trip that's a little bit off the beaten track, uh, but still absolutely incredible views. Uh, take, take the Gold Rush Trail. You won't be sorry. Thank you so much for watching. Kind of sorry that Brian isn't here with me today, but uh, hopefully we'll catch him in the next video. If you really liked this and would like to see more, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Uh, um, if you're not so sure, you can give us a thumbs down. Uh, we don't mind. Uh, don't forget to leave us a comment. I absolutely love hearing from people and, um, and I'd love to hear about your adventures that you've taken here in BC. And uh, if you've got a Walmart story, I'd love to hear that too. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.